Hey, get it, guys. It's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. Sun is going down, and it's been a ripper of a day, and I'm back for the late shift. This loom's getting finished. I'm wiring up a Link Monsoon onto Old Yeller yet again. She's a bit of a wiring slut, my engine. Looms are hopping on and off it all the time. Today's loom, being a monsoon, I only get four injected drivers. I'm using the standard ignition. So I'll have a quick chat in a moment about the igniters, but in a separate video. Pretty simple loom. I've chosen to come through the middle because the throttle body's out here like this. And that means it's just going to be easier for me to flow my wires out. The igniter's out by the throttle body. And it means I don't have to bring coil wiring in, around the back, around here, down that side, down to the front coil. It's also another thing that you might notice. If I wanted to make a similar loom from a right-hand drive vehicle to a left-hand drive vehicle, look how easy it is to change the direction. Because it's only got a single loom going in here instead of looms coming down the sides and across the back. So one loom could be left-hand or right-hand. Oh, sorry, right-hand or left-hand. Because the ECU on a right hand is on the left hand and on the left hand is on the right hand. I fitted an aftermarket idle speed control unit running the monsoon, keeping it all nice and simple. As such, I need to group the injectors together. I've got four outputs, so it's going to be four groups of two. This is how we'd normally do it. So we'd normally go, the, we'd write the firing order down, go one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. And we put injector drive number one here, drive one, two, three, four. And that's how we normally group them together. The mirror image of the with the engine with each cylinder that comes to TDC on the same drive. However, have you ever looked at how Toyota grouped them together? And have you ever wondered why they do it like that? Do I to spend a bit of time working on the development of these? And then they made it better in 94 by going sequential injection. And most of us know that sequential injection is better. But we don't have that option if we've only got four drives. However, there's a thing known as semi-sequential injection. And that's where most of the injector timing is approximately close. Well, it's closer than the way I just showed you. Let's have a look at how Toyota did it. So how did Toyota do it? With number one cylinder, they put seven. With number two, they put eight. With number three, they put, it's gotta be five. And number four, they put six. So what's this injector grouping about? Well, by having the injector timing closer to correct, you improve your efficiency of your engine and the engine performs slightly crisper, more responsive. So providing your ECU has the ability to fire semi-sequential, then there's a couple of horsepower just sitting there. There's some gains to be made. Now when, we dis when I discuss this, there are people that say, my engine's grouped the other way and it runs perfectly fine. You're correct, runs perfectly fine. But you could have given away a couple of horsepower. It wouldn't actually matter which way you group the injectors. You could put one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. You could put one and three, 
five and seven, same on the other side. The engine would still run. The fuel would still go in. However, by grouping them correctly, there are small gains to be made. Not massive, but there are small gains. What do you need? You need an ECU that will do sequential injection. So you need a crankshaft position sensor and a camshaft position sensor so the ECU knows where in that 720 degrees of revolution it does. Just like fully sequential. You need those characteristics. If you don't have both a speed and a sync sensor, then you're not going to get the full benefit of semi-sequential. If you want a little bit more information on this, let's have a look in the link software. There's a help file, and it's actually got some really, really good information on this for those of you that want a little bit more reading and have a, just extend your knowledge a little bit. So here I am in the link software. I go up to the help file right here, wiring information, we push that button there, and it brings up the main headers straight away. We go down here and we click on output wiring. We've got here, we've got injection drive wirings. So there is some good information there. It tells you how many amps each circuit can run. And it tells you a little bit about impedance, high and low impedance. We might just chat about that in a moment. Down here, we also have injection mode. And here's a really good little chat about semi-sequential injection. The example it gives, 18436572, is it actually brings up the OEM 1UZFE wiring. 1 and 7, 2 and 8, 3 and 5, 4 and 6. Really good little talk about that. And it might help you understand and backs up what I'm saying. It's also quite important to check your impedance or your resistance of your injectors. Link recommend if you're below 6 ohms that a resistor is fitted. Otherwise, use a ECU that can fire peak and hold. Some ECUs do fire peak and hold, so it will fire both low impedance or high impedance injectors, but it does pay to check these things. Now just before I wrap up, don't pair your coils in a semi-sequential injection mode like you would your injectors. It won't run. Pair them like that first one. So going on that, coils like that, injectors like that. 